Hello everybody. So I just released my new CSS3 Pro course. This is an update to the foundations course. Essentially, I've added an extra chapter covering the pro features, if you will. Not, not all of it pro. So I have a section on CSS jobs. I help you to understand how CSS3 fits into the job market. I also get into some of the sites you might want to go to to be able to refer to if you're adding to your CSS skills. You know, CSS, like so many other languages out there, they're pretty big. And the fact of the matter is, you're not going to use most of it because most of the jobs don't require all these little things that you can do in CSS. But I give you resources where you'll be able to learn about more about CSS animation, although we do that in the pro course, and uh, gradients and all kinds of different things you can do with CSS. I get into Flexbox and Grid. I look at Bootstrap. I help you understand when to use different versions of Bootstrap, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Again, it's an update to the foundations course. If you did the foundations course, you don't really need to do this course. Uh, but if you're new, hey, it's a little bit more complete now, a little bit more well-rounded, I suppose. Somebody asked me whether there was going to be an intro price special. Yes, the intro price special is the current price because I will be raising the prices on all the courses simply because the Studio Web courses, my courses, are very different from anything you're going to see on Udemy or any other platform. Why? Because they're much more complete and comprehensive. You see, Udemy courses are just video only. You watch videos, you, and you watch the next video, and you watch the next video. They may provide you some documentation, I'm sure they do, but it's just videos. When you do a Studio Web course, it's a whole different scenario. So how are Studio Web courses different? They're different because they are interactive, gamified, where you have instant help, instant feedback, you're tracked, your progress is tracked, you're scored, graded, you have a system that tells you when you've been on last, it takes you right back where you left off, the material is much more fine-grained. So for example, we have no 10 and 20 minute long videos, which puts everybody to sleep. The average video length of all my courses are six minutes. So that's just one thing. Every single video lesson has quiz questions, cold challenges, theoretical questions. The quizzing component in the Studio Web platform is half of the value, well, maybe a third of the value of the courses. Videos alone are one third of the stool. Adding quizzing, that's another third of the stool. Adding the instant help and feedback, that's another leg of the stool. So yes, my courses are going to cost you ooh, $20, $30, ooh, it, but it cannot compare to video only course. You want to watch videos only, there's lots of YouTube out there. So that's the difference. So yeah, the discount is the current price because the prices will be going up in the new year because uh, they're too cheap to begin with. I just want to cover a little bit of bookkeeping. When people send me questions, if you're part of the mentoring group in your subject field in the email, put in mentoring group, your mentoring ID, and then that means your question will be answered much more quickly. If you do send me questions and if I ever get to them, and it's just not, it's not I'm not trying to be a, 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 you know, a jerk here, it's just I get so many messages and DMs sent to me, you know, it's, it's, I just don't have time. But if you do send me an email, do not send me Lord of the Rings Part 8. Do not send me War and Peace. I don't want to see huge emails. I, I just don't have time to read them. You have to send me short and concise emails, well-structured, one or two-line intro, main question, some bullet point questions. That's it. I just had somebody, a nice guy, I'm sure. You sent me like, a, like two pages of text. I, I just can't read it. I can't read all your pages of text. So you have to be more concise in your communications. Whether you're part of the mentoring program or not, please be concise if you want to get your emails answered uh, promptly. Understand, I get 100, 200 messages a day. So it's, it's just not possible for me to read the long form. And this is actually just good business writing. You want to learn to be more succinct and to the point in your communications, you will get much further ahead that way. Before I get into the next subject, I just wanted to point out something. I am a bit of an audiophile. Over the last 20 years, I've been buying audiophile amps and speakers. I'm not super crazy. I'm not one of these crazy people who spend 50, 100, 200 grand on um, 
audio equipment. Although I've gone vinyl, Japanese vinyl, I've gotten big towered speakers, they could sound amazing. But in my uh, old age here at 169 years old, my, my feeling vis-a-vis -vis audio, it has to be sound great, but also has to be convenient. And also has to be aesthetic. I don't want some big giant speakers and amps and wires in my space. I just don't want it. Forget about it. I'm not going to run things through walls. Although I guess I could, but I don't want to. I don't want to run things through walls. So I've been looking around at the wireless digital space. And I know this is not about code, but it's interesting. Uh, you'll find, first of all, when people say there's no difference in music quality, whether it be vinyl or high def digital or CD or whatever, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They're using crap speakers. If you don't have good speakers, you won't hear the quality difference in the audio stream, guaranteed. That being said, I've done comparisons. Being a nerd, I would buy an album in CD, download the MP3, stream it, get the 24-bit high-def audio, and get the Japanese pressed vinyl, and get the North American pressed vinyl. Now, everybody knows, not everybody knows, in the audiophile world, Japanese press vinyls are considered the pinnacle in terms of high quality vinyl. They great sound because the Japanese just had uh, better processes in terms of how they process their albums. We won't get into it here. I've done comparison 24 bit audio, digital audio, properly remastered with uh, Japanese vinyls with good turntables, etc. Same quality. Same quality, you have enough fidelity in that. Remember, the bits in the music makes a big difference. It's good computer lessons here. Eight bit sound is kind of like uh, your old cell phone, you know, the very compressed sound. 16 bit sound is CD quality, if you're going to call it quality, uh, which is below vinyl. Then 24 bit is high def. Then you got 32 bit is what they master music and movie soundtracks in now, 20, 32 bit. More bits, more musical information. And I do a lot of video editing. I can tell you, when I look at this, the sound waves on a 32-bit uh, piece of audio, recorded 32-bit, there's much more information. It's just simply a lot more sound information there. So if you have a good stereo system, excuse me, if you have good speakers and good amp along with 24-bit audio, you're going to get incredible sound dynamics. You're going to hear instruments you haven't heard before. You're going to hear it's going to sound real as opposed to like a telephone. All right. All that being said, I've been moving off of all the wires and the amps and the speakers because it's just too much. I don't want all that mess. So I've been looking at digital speakers, see what's out there. And I've been trying different things. And let me tell you, there are some great options now. So one thing I got was inexpensive, but it sounds amazing. I, and I'm not sponsored, but I'm just going to point you out because I want to point out good stuff to you guys. This is a, my lunchbox. This is the fanciest lunchbox you're ever going to see. It's actually a Bang & Olufsen speaker. Uh, yeah, it's a Bang & Olufsen speaker. It weighs nothing. It's about eight hours of listening on this. It's Bluetooth only, so it's not the best quality, but it's, I tell you, they do some nice processing here, in here. They process the sound really well, so they take, they get rid of uh, the harshness and artifacts you might get in certain digital music. I won't get into the details, but anyway, this little speaker, which is battery powered, can run hours and hours on this. Um, I'm telling you, it gets you equivalent sound in many respects to some $5,000 speakers I've purchased in the past. Big tower speakers, great speakers. This can give you just as good sound, I'm telling you, um, to my ear. And it, well, you got a stereo pair them, you can stereo pair them, or you can have them single like this. These are ambient speakers by default, meaning you just put it in a room and it's, it's, it sounds comes out at all ends. Anyway. If you want to dip your toe into high-end audio, this is a speaker I recommend. These days, I think they sell for about 500 US, 550. A little expensive for a Bluetooth speaker, but trust me, the sound quality blows away any other Bluetooth speakers I've heard. Bang & Olsen, by the way, is a very famous European brand that's been known for two things, high-quality audio and um, great design. This is not necessarily, I don't know, it looks pretty good actually. It looks like a lunchbox, I know, but it could put like a little Mickey Mouse sticker here, I guess. But um, it looks pretty good actually. In real life, you're, ooh, it's pretty nice. Now, there are other speakers, some of them look fantastic, but the, the prices are equivalent. Anyway, super cheap, relative speaking. Get $5,000 of sound 
and a five six hundred dollar US dollar package. I got them on sale on Amazon for like five sixty Canadian, so that was a very good price. So last point, people ask me about the mentoring program. Um, so just so you understand, my mentoring program is my most premium training where you're gonna be dealing directly with me. You have access to all my course material, but most importantly is the mentoring. Now the mentoring means that you get on bi-weekly with Zoom calls with myself and other people in the program. There's mentoring meetings, those coaching sessions, if you will, have maybe 10 to 15 people, depending on the week, and most people get a chance to answer questions. Ask, excuse me, ask questions of me, I'll answer, and you get to meet other people in the group. I have people all levels in the program. I have people who have zero experience writing code. Some people have tried other courses and just couldn't get past them. And I have other people with 20 years experience. So you may be asking yourself, why would a people with 20 years experience join a mentoring program about code? Because the coding is just the foundations of the mentoring program. The mentoring program has much more to it than that. To me, coding has always been a means to an end, but it is not the end. The end goal is financial independence. I've always found that coding was the easiest way, the fastest way, the quickest way to getting to making good money without needing to go to school for four or five years or more. There's no quicker way. I don't know any other, I don't know of any other profession that gets you there so quick. Within a year, you can start be making two, three times the average salary. That's the way it goes. So with the mentoring program, some people are in there, in and out of there in a few months. Some people are there for longer because they just want to be involved with the community that's growing there. But the goal is, is to get you to financial independence through code. Some people will get into Python Django, some people will go to Node, some people will do Shopify, some people are gonna get into no code. I'm gonna be adding no code modules to it soon. The mentoring program is organic. It is organic, meaning I keep adding to it. So it starts off, interestingly enough, with a course, it's a little course, but a very viable course on psychology of learning and interaction. I have a background in psychology. I'm not a psychologist, but that was my major in university. Anyhow, so I realized that we needed to help people learn how to learn and help them with interpersonal skills, soft skills. So I start off, the very first thing you're gonna learn in the coding program is those skills. And that's gonna help set the stage for your fast track into software development. The great thing about the program is you can learn at any pace, you can take your time. If, if you wanna spend 20 minutes a day, that's fantastic. Three hours a day, that's fantastic. Maximum should be three to four hours a day, maximum. Minimum 20 minutes a day, four days a week, five days a week. So to reiterate, the mentoring program has its foundations in code and there are hundreds of coding lessons, literally hundreds of lessons, interactive, quizzing, very comprehensive, most comprehensive course out there, I believe. Go check the reviews, Google My Business, you'll find it, you'll see what people say. But that's the foundation of it. Then from there, you learn how to get jobs, you learn how to start freelance if you want, you learn if you want to get into business, entrepreneurship, you get into there. Uh, you get the coaching, the feedback. It's the most comprehensive program. I started about a year and a half ago to see how it would go, how it went, see if I liked it. I'm in a fortunate enough, I am in a fortunate enough position. I can do whatever I want and like now for a long time. I like the mentoring program, so I'm continuing to expand it. So I invite you to join. So unlike I guess my competitors, they charge five, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars for their programs. Mine is less than a thousand US dollars. And you can even pay it over time, uh, monthly payments. And guess what? There's no fixed timeline. Whether it takes you six months to complete it, three months or a year, and whether you want to stay after a year and just hang out and learn more in the program, that's up to you. It's access for life for now, as long as I can handle the load. Check out the link below for less than a thousand dollars or reasonably monthly reasonable monthly payments for just 12 months uh, it's a greatest bargain out there in terms of learning how to code i highly recommend it and of course yes this is shameless self-promotion on my part but i wouldn't put it out there unless i was super confident that i was going to benefit you one of the most rewarding things about being a teacher is the feedback you get back from students I love hearing back from students. I get to hear from students from 18 years ago who've gone on and gotten great careers. Some have worked for FANG, some have started their own businesses, or as I suggested or alluded to before, my top student, he's my superstar. His startup 
is now uh, one of the most successful startups in Canadian history, and in fact, one of the most successful startups ever, ever given how big and how quickly it's grown. Um, there'll be more on about that soon. I'm going to get him in an interview soon. And he was one of my um, first people to actually use Studio Web to learn how to code, and I mentored him up not only in coding, but in business as well. Anyhow, uh, take a look at the links below. I got to go drink my coffee. <laughs>